Welcome to Chris Parking Shooting Sports. This is the CZ600 Trail in 223. Quite an unusual rifle from CZ, but I've had an awful lot of fun using it. I've got to say one of the things I absolutely love about this rifle is just how small and portable it can be. I'm using it in these Death Grip Infinite tripod sticks today and basically that's what it falls down to for when I'm transporting around. I put a piece of Arca rail on the underside which will go straight into this clamp. I can nip that in place. And then another little tiny factor I love is that when you press the release button here for the stock, it just pops the stock open, my hand was on it then, just pops the stock open just an inch which allows you to just grab it and move it that quickly. Now of course in a foxing situation you might want to move a little bit more quietly than that but for speed of deployment that is really really fast and of course you can keep your finger on it makes it a little bit quieter because there are detented positions for different lengths of pull all the way out to the full length and once you're on it you're straight on it. Magazine release is on the right side here, conventional sort of system. You can also do it with a button on the left side, which makes it good for ambidextrous shooters. The safety catch down here, fire position or in safe position, and that locks the trigger. The trigger, which I'll tell you more about, is it's just fantastic. It's a two-stage trigger, and it's just... I wouldn't say it's the saving grace of the rifle, but it's one of the joys of this rifle. And I do like the overall package quite a lot, to be honest. It's not a perfect rifle, it has certain limitations. Caesar themselves only guarantee this rifle to 2 MOA. The other rifles are either guaranteed 1 MOA or 0.75 MOA for the range rifle, which is the target version only. Now, although that might seem a weak thing to do, I actually think it's very honest of them. I will admit at first I wasn't too impressed by the groups I was getting, but when the barrel ran in a little bit, um, it's improved massively and I'm now confident in getting one MOA from this particular rifle and that's from using 55 grain hunting ammunition all the way through past 70 grains with match ammunition. That trigger is just beautiful and it's fully adjustable through four weight stages. I will give another little mention of this bog tripod sticks actually because this new version, the Infinite one, it is superb. And you can see now, I've just set that handle exactly at the tension I want. And I can move that rifle as I prefer, and it just stops in position. So that is fantastic. And if I want to track quarry moving it, well, there's no lag, there's no hesitation, it just moves smoothly. So I'm already a huge fan of this, and I've only had two rifles out using it so far. But with the clamp version, and also this has got the Arca Swiss rail, which clamps directly into the ball head, I am super happy with that. I mean, how, how excellent is that? It's just perfect, and I can lock that even more if I want to. And you'll see now it hesitates a little bit. Just release the pressure a little bit, just to balance the weight of this rifle, and there we go. It's absolutely perfect. And that's moving it around with hardly even moving any the actual feet of the sticks. The sticks themselves are remaining stable. If I can straight on that, track wherever I need to, close the bolt, move a little bit. Yep, there's fine, there's fine. Bang. That's all I've got to do with them. Very impressed. I'm going to be using these a lot. So you've seen the gun in use on the range. How I'm going to make this simple, I'm going to tell you all about it from start to finish because 
This has been a very interesting review rifle because although people think it's a bit like a bolt action AR-15, I don't think it is. Um, I've shot some AR-15s. I'm not a particularly big AR-15 guy. I'm a bolt action guy, but I can see a lot about this. I can see why it's definitely polarised opinion in some respects. But I'll tell you about it real time. I'm going to tell you about it start to finish, how I got on with it. So to start off with, it's a 15 by one thread on the end of the barrel for a moderator. The first time I took this shooting, I was using a different moderator. And long and short of it was, I was suspicious of that moderator because I could hear a slight noise inside it. And I'm a big one for keeping maintained consistent harmonics. And that thing was rattling. It was almost imperceptible. You were like this and you could just about, it. took it apart, put it back together, tensioned it, did everything to it, couldn't make it work, swapped the mod, problem solved, groups halved. That's one of the things I did to start with. This barrel is 18.4 millimetres in diameter, which is nearly three quarters of an inch, and it's a semi-weight, sort of semi-heavy profile from CZ. It is 412 millimetres long, which is 16 inches, and it's a one in seven inch twist rate, six groove barrel. So it's quite a short barrel for a centrefire, and I was interested to see what the muzzle velocities had come out like when I put the ammunition over a chronograph. Um, over the top of the barrel, actually before I say that, I will say this is almost identical in specification other than length to the CZ Alpha 223 I was using a few months ago, which was stunningly accurate and consistent on paper. So I am immediately going to run, you know, ignore completely any questions over CZ's barrel making because they're cold hammer forged the barrels. The same action almost identical because it's the it's the mini length action is this one. This rifle is only available in 223 or 76239. So I'm ignoring that as well because I trust the CZ metallics, I trust the Caesar rifling, I trust the Caesar barrel making procedure, no doubts in my mind. But what I really want to know is, and CZ themselves admit this, that all the rifles in the CZ600 range have an accuracy sort of rating, if you want to call it that. Um, the range model has a 0.75 MOA. The other three, which is the Alpha, the Ergo and the Lux, have a 1 MOA guarantee. This one only has a 2 MOA guarantee. So why is that? Well, I've put that down to two or three things. And I think it's very honest of CZ to bring this one up. But we'll get to that in a minute. So it's got loads of M lock on the fore end. You do need to be a little bit careful. It does tell you in the manual to be careful with the length of the bolts on the M lock because if you use long bolts, they can actually touch the barrel through it. Because it's a very slim, you know, it's quite a small. I mean, look how my hand wraps that fore in there. It's quite slender. So again, nothing, no problem. Just make sure the bolts aren't too long and touching the barrel. I would never do that, would I? Cure that one. There's another bit off the group size. Uh, on the underside here, I'll actually put a piece of Arca rail on there because I've been using the new sticks from Bog, the Bog Infinite sticks, um, or tripod, is it, so to speak. And you'll see that in the video, really liking those. So I put a bit of Arca rail on there. That works with that because this is all aluminium, Action's aluminium. The bolt lugs themselves lock into the barrel itself, and the underside here is polymer. You've got the standard 10 round um, magazine, which will take the 223 rounds. That's conventional to the CZ family, it's a Bren 2 magazine system. You've got a release button on the right hand side there for it, click it, it'll come out, and there is also one on the left hand side, so click there, and it will pop out. These mags are super consistent, easy to use, and the ammunition just clicks in through the top. So you don't need to you know, take the mag out and push them one at a time. They will just click straight in from the top. Back to number three, there's Picatinny rail on here and there's Picatinny rail on the fore end. I broke one of my rules and I mounted, uh, when I had a, a normal daylight optic on it to start, I broke one of my rules and I actually had one of the front, the front ring on the fore end rather than the, um, the action itself. That again, I've shot a lot of ammunition through this rifle, probably 200 rounds, which is quite unusual for a review rifle for me. Um, that again, I moved that mount back onto the action. Yes, the group size got just that little bit smaller again. Another factor there. 
And the real question is in the fact that this fore end is actually, or the, the hand guard, is actually clamped around the barrel. So where we're so used to having fully free floating barrels where you've got an action that's bedded into a stock and then the barrel hangs out of that free, well this one, the fore end is clamped around the barrel. So that is another factor which sees that I've been honest about and is possibly, quite probably in fact, another one of the small increments as to why it goes from that 1 MOA standard down to a 2 MOA standard. Anyway, just at the moment you can see it's got a PARD 008 on it, that's mounted on the PARD extension mount, so that's all on the action. Shoots really well on this gun, and although I haven't actually shot a fox with it yet, I have taken it out with that on and done some spying on some animals, just tested it and set some stuff up with it, because one of the things I loved about this rifle is because with the M-lock on the front, I've put a piece of Picatinny on there, because I can put my illuminator right out on the side here. What does that do? Well, it prevents any reflection coming back towards me or into the actual optic itself. And number two, it just helps control the balance and the space of everything because these parts particularly quite compact scopes. If you want to put a big illuminator on, where do you put it? You can sort of put it on an offset mount here or there, but it's actually way easier just to put it out on the forehand. Had I had the, uh, the bits I needed to do this, I would have actually put it under the barrel and, and had it poking out there, but it was fine on the left side, and I really appreciated the improvement in image quality by having my illuminator mounted there. Having a look at the safety system now. So, it's a three lug bolt, 60 degree lift, the bolt lugs themselves lock directly into the barrel, the action is not pressure bearing, the barrel and the bolt are. So the action is in fact just a, it's just a structure to mount the two into. So anyway, go forward there, safety catch, that's fire, and that, is safe. It's ambidextrous on both sides. Now when it's in safe mode the bolt handle is locked but if I press the bolt release catch there and lift I can actually still open the bolt with it on safe. Going back to the bolt release catch obviously if we want to take the bolt out that's how we do it. So it's a three lug bolt and it's a semi-control feed it's a three lug bolt with a semi-control feed bolt face and that has got an ejector pin that pops out the front there and actually flicks the case out of the gun from the extractor claw there which draws it easily from the chamber. That system gives a slight spring when you're operating the bolt so when I just pop that back in, if I just operate that bolt you can actually feel that spring just in that bit of the movement there which sort of softens the bolt reciprocation actually as well. So with the bolt out of the rifle I'll just show you how you can actually decock the bolt and slide the firing pin out for cleaning and that also allows you if necessary to take the bolt head off. Now these, the whole CZ600 range is interchangeable for bolt heads although on this one you're only going to be using 762.39 or 223 whereas some of the larger longer actions you've got much more variety of calibres. That slots back in there and I hate doing this on camera because I've now got to recock the bolt. And I've done it. I've done it so many times now, maybe it's becoming automatic for me. Now this trigger is, unlike the rest of the CZ600 range, this one is a two-stage. If I show you that on camera there, we've got a lovely light pressure there. Click. There are four weight settings on here and those lead you between different stages. So the first stage goes from 400 up to 600 grams between stage one, two, three or four. The second stage break is between 950 and 1700 grams. Now that is 33 up to 60 ounces. I will say that if you are not happy with any of those, I would suggest reconsidering uh, your trigger technique because it is just delightful. There's a tiny little bit of creep on it, but it can be adjusted out. And I think it is absolutely superb. And given the fact that generally you've got a sort of AR-15 layout in terms of the grip shape, you know, it's quite a short actual reach to the trigger. I think that makes it even more desirable to have a really nice trigger sometimes because your trigger finger isn't actually at a great 90 degree angle when you've got short reach from the throat to the blade, which is this distance here. So that is another place where CZ have done really nicely.
one of my favourite things about this rifle, and it really is just such a little nothing, is the stock system in the fact that it's telescopic and there is a button here where the safety catch is on the rest of the 600s. This is the stock telescoping button on the trail. And if I pop that forward there, that locks forward. Close the bolt down, whichever you want it to do, and that's that. But one of the little things, this is what I love, when you press that button there, it just pops the stock out about 30 millimetres and it gives you, it drops it into your hands, you can just straight grab it, pull it straight out, not a problem. This has incremental stages in length of pull from 143 to 347 millimetres, which is six and a half to 13.6 inches. So if you've got a variety of shooters, some of them might actually want that shorter stock there, whereas some, of the one, some people will want the bigger one. There's a recoil pad on the back, it's very thin, it's rubber, there's a piece of picket in your rail there which you can mount any other accessories onto, and the rubber is it's grippy rather than recoil absorbent because again, very very small calibres. So, whenever I've put a picture of this up or talked about this, people say what's going on with the cheek piece? The cheek piece is a polarising factor because it has to be designed so that it will slide along the side of the stock. I'm just trying to do this on a bench. So that slides on there. So you cannot physically make that cheek piece a huge, great, bulbous thing because it's not physically going to slide along the side of the action. But when it is extended, pops out there. Yes, if your head's back here, you are on the cheek piece. If you're down there, you're not on the cheek piece as much. Now, is this a super precision, all day at the range, prone shooting, target oriented, ultimate accuracy precision rifle? Frankly, no it's not. That is not the intention of this gun. The intention of this gun is to make something a little bit different, a lot more compact and very easy to store up, fold away and carry. Because how many guns are literally, can I spin around in my armoury like this? That is so easy to pack away in the vehicle, in your baggage. If you've got to go a long carry somewhere, it'll go in a rucksack. It is just a delight to carry. And yes, it isn't the most accurate rifle I've ever shot, but it is consistent. And I will tell you, there are a few things you can watch out doing on this, and you will get more from it straight away. Let me just stand this back up now. Now, you can see here, there's a little bit of play in the stock on that. I think on AR-15s they call it battle rattle. Well, I'm not going to call that here. It's a bit of play in the stock. It's simply a factor of the fact that you've got movement in the action. So that is better if you can just preload that so it doesn't rattle when the gun fires. Also, because the bipod or whatever you've got mounted on the handguard or the support system, because all of that is affecting infinitesimally the barrel tenon that is clamped around, be more consistent with the pressures you apply to things. This is not a difficult gun to shoot, but it is a gun you can get a lot more from if you treat it with good technique. I have enjoyed using this gun a lot more than many others this year, purely because it made me readdress sometimes the laziness with which some people, and, and I myself, can shoot some rifles, which allow you to be so lazy. And I'm not saying it's a hard gun to shoot, it's an easy gun to get 2M away from, not a problem at all. But if you want to get it better than that, you can do. I just think it's worth working on because I've really enjoyed doing it and I've gone through a lot of ammo. Just to look at some of the ammunition here, let's just pop this gun out of the way for one second. Here are some groups. Now I'll just tell you, I always shoot at 100 metres. So this inch at 100 yards for MOA or 1.047 inches doesn't quite apply. Essentially, we've got 55 grain Hornady VMAX. This is my go-to foxing load, 223 load. I use hundreds of rounds of that every year. It is superb, and I use it for my benchmark level, really, on every 223 I get. A different one we've got here. This is the 55 grain GMX. It's a longer copper bullet. Doesn't really give much expansion on small animals. It's okay on foxes. I actually use that because I had some hair control to do and I needed to make sure I was using non-toxic for that. If we move to the other end of the scale, these are 73 grain ELD match, Remington long skinny match bullets with great wind capability or wind resistant capability. Now of course, with that being a one in seven inch twist barrel, you've got no problem with any of these because it will shoot them all. And interestingly, 
I was so keen to try this gun, I even hand-loaded quite a lot of ammunition, and I was using 40 grain VMAX for that. And you think, oh, that's going to overstabilize the 1 in 7 inch twist. Yes, perhaps technically it might overstabilize, but it did shoot very well, and that was definitely no problem to stay sub MOA with that one. But that's a hand load. I'm only going to guarantee MOA, like Hornady or CZ can guarantee MOA using their factory ammunition. So if we look at these rounds here, I've done the uh, Ballistic X printout. I'll show those on screen because at 100 meters, these all beat minute of angle. Um, so I can't really knock CZ for giving it a 2 MOA guarantee, can I? Whether you get that or not, um, might depend a little bit on, on how well you treat it and how hard you try because as I've said it's worth working on I've shot you know for example this month I've, I've had a £10,000 rifle and I've had this which I think these are about uh, 11 1200 pounds I think these are about obviously check with your dealer as always this has been sent to me by Sportsman Gun Centre for the review process um, it's not an expensive rifle, but I think it's got some great features and functionality. And I must admit, the instant I put my illuminator on this forend, I have started putting moves into my other rifles to put the illuminator in a similar position, either under or on the side, because the actual illumination quality I'm getting is superior than to having it up here where it reflects off the back of the moderator and things like that. I've got oodles of M-lock space, I've got oodles of Picatinny rail, Overall length 690 to 890 millimetres, so I've got huge amounts of storage capability with it. That's 27 to 35 inches, and the overall weight is only 2.8 kilograms, which is six and a quarter pounds. So, you know, you can add whatever scopes you want to it great night vision or thermal imaging because I don't think it's going to be a four 500 meter crow shooting rifle. I'll be honest, I don't think it is. I wouldn't try it for that, but for foxing out to 200 meters, I have no problem with this at all. And I love the fact that I could maneuver it in the vehicle easily, I could be in the driver's seat, I could just pick it up out the footwell, I could go from one window to the other window, and it was quieter. I've got the moderator on it, it was quieter to handle, I wasn't bumping it around inside the cab, and that is a huge factor for it. And I will genuinely miss this rifle when it goes back because. The seasons work haven't been with me. I've been very, very busy, and as you know, we're coming up to Christmas now. I'm filming this at the start of December, so I'm actually hoping to get some more time to do some recreational shooting for my own enjoyment and some actual hunting. And this is the gun I want to use with it. I'm going to leave the Par Double Eight on it because it suits it, and I like shooting it. I genuinely like shooting this gun because. It's like a personal, it's a personal challenge to me. It's like, Chris, you can shoot this better if you try. You can shoot it better if you try. But yeah, I've just really enjoyed that. And yes, people are gonna say the cheap piece is funny and it's got a two MOA guarantee, but the cheap piece is what it is. It's part of the, what, the way it's designed and built. I, I, I just don't care. I like the quirkiness of this rifle. And I'd rather shoot this because it's quiet, it's accurate, it's got you know delicacy to the bolt operation, it ejects, it feeds well, the magazine system works beautifully. Um, I just think it's a great rifle with a great trigger. So don't discount it. So many people just discount it out of hand because of that. And they just don't look at the honesty CZ have stated about some of these slight technical factors, which are slightly detrimental to what we've come to, the, to, to expect as the sub MOA or half MOA rifles with perfect barrel harmonics and this, that, and the other. And you know, there's plenty of rifles out there where they go, oh yeah, the barrel's um, it's free floating, and then you actually get to it, and the barrel's not even free floating. They just lie to you. Now. CZ are being completely honest. They've said it's a two MOA guarantee. Well, it beats that by, it, it, it halves that easily. So I think that deserves a prize in itself for being an honest gun maker. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that review because again, I've treated it in a bit of a different way. It's been organic and I've just said what I wanted to say really. Um, Please like and definitely subscribe because your subscription is what brings Hornady to the party to bring all this ammunition which lets me shoot all these groups on paper that you've seen. And 
Don't forget, click the notification bell because I'm making videos every week at the moment. There's plenty to see. Thank you to the British Shooting Show for sponsoring my channel at the moment. Uh, if you go to the end of the film, there's actually a link you can click on for tickets to the 2023 British Shooting Show, which also includes car parking for the day you're there. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.